morning. Morning. We are going to stand and open up with God of Wonders. <laughs> Please join me in our call to worship. This will be a responsive call to worship. I will read the light print and you will respond with what's in bold. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all other gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountain are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands form the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our Lord, 
And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let his name be praised forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you that you have opened the doors of your house and opened the doors, the arms, Lord, your arms to us and welcomed us in. Father, I pray for all of us here today gathered, for all of us here watching, Lord, that you wrap those arms around us and draw us close to your heart now. Father, send your spirit out among us to inspire us, to teach us, to uplift us, Lord, and to know that we are yours. Father, I pray that you draw your hand, your hand of the spirit across all the people here and all the people watching, that we would know that we are your true children and they would begin to feel just a little bit of that great affection that you have for us. Father, by that same Spirit, may we give you a fitting praise and worship today, Lord. And we ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen. Let's continue standing and worshiping God, singing, Here I Am to Worship. Please be seated. Well, good morning and happy Valentine's Day. If you had no other plans for Valentine's Day, I'm glad you came here because this is the place to be because truly no one loves you more than your God. No one loves you more than your Lord and your Savior. And you are here in the house with a person who loves you more than anyone else. And I am also glad to see you here, whether you're here in person with us 
uh, are joining us online, um, either live or maybe a little bit later in the day or even in the week. We are just glad that you come to join and worship our God with us together. Um, all of you, which you bring, you bring a piece of God with you, a part of God with you, and together we're able to magnify him in a way that we're much greater than we ever could alone. Um, if you are uh, here with us in person, um, everything you need to follow along with the worship service is going to be right here in your bulletin with you. Um, if you're online, you can follow it on the, uh, the bulletin, download that from the comment section of Facebook, or you can just follow along with the words that will appear on your screen at the appropriate time. Um, there are a few announcements I would like to point out to you, and uh, most, if not all of these, can also be found in your connector. Um, we have small groups that are going to be meeting this week. Uh, first one is our SNL Youth Small Groups. We'll be meeting here at the church at 5 o'clock tonight. That is for all uh, middle, age, uh, middle school and high school youth. That's 5 o'clock at the church tonight. Um, SNL Small Groups, please make plans to attend. We also have our Theology on Tap discussion group that meets uh, Monday nights at Crafty Draft at 7 o'clock. And that will be tomorrow, Monday night, 7 o'clock. And we are continuing our discussion of Scott Peck's The Road Less Traveled. Uh, so uh, we'd love for you to come out and join us for a wonderful discussion and a time to fellowship with one another. Also, the ladies' Bible study is getting kicked off again this week. It's going to be Thursday, 7 o'clock, and that is a virtual Bible study. So you'll be meeting uh, via, not Zoom, Google Meets. The Google Meet kind of like Zoom, but Google's version of that. But the whole point is you get to do it from your house, sitting in front of your computer. But it's a great Bible study. Some great ladies um, get a chance to learn from one another. I believe you'll be looking and studying the book of Hosea. And so you'll be starting Hosea on Thursday at 7 o'clock. Our Ash Wednesday is upon us. I know, crazy, hard to believe. Already is Ash Wednesday. Lent is starting. It's beginning Wednesday. And at 7 p.m. here at the church, we will be having our traditional Ash Wednesday service. And uh, at this moment, plan to go forward with it just like we always do. Um, so we'll be having the regular Ash Wednesday service, and we'll be um, also putting the ashes on. But that is, of course, voluntary for you to participate in that as well. But we'd love to have you. 7 o'clock this Wednesday at Ash Wednesday service. Um, the, speaking of Ash Wednesday and Lent, um, it is also time to start ordering Easter lilies. Um, those are $15, and we need your orders in by March 7th. Um, Easter is very early this year. I think it's that first weekend in April. So we're already getting Easter lily orders ready. So think about that. And also speaking of Easter, we're going to be beginning our Lenten devotion. Um, and this is going to be something you can do at home. What we decided this year... Our Lenten devotion is we're going to give you a reading guide for the Gospel of Mark. And uh, we thought we'd have the reading guides ready and hand out today. They're not quite. We'll be able to give them to you Wednesday or next Sunday. But it doesn't start till Thursday. So we'll also be posting the daily readings on Facebook and, uh, in, and our Instagram pages. Uh, but this is a chance for you to be able to read through the Gospel of Mark uh, throughout the 40 days of Lent. And it's not an incredibly long book. It's only 16 chapters. And we've broken it up uh, day by day. So it's, you take it in small pieces. And in that um, guide, there are also some questions that you'll um, be able to ask yourself to help you in your devotional and your study of the Gospel of Mark. And so we encourage you to read along with us uh, through the, the, the Gospel of Mark during the Lent season, and also encourage you to look for a few little Easter eggs that appear in Mark. Um, Mark's a very unique Gospel. It is the, uh, believed to be the earliest, it's the shortest, and it's got some features you don't see anywhere else in, in any other Gospel. So I encourage you as you read through Mark, to look for some of these strange occurrences. Uh, for instance, uh, look out for the time in Mark where Jesus spits in somebody's face, because he does do that in Mark. Also look out for the time when Jesus sticks his finger in somebody's ear, the time that Jesus calls a woman a dog, and also the appearance of a naked man. I promise, all of these are in the Gospel of Mark, but just keep an eye out for them. Look for some strange occurrences like this, but mainly Look for the ways that the Gospel of Mark proclaims the good news and can continue to encourage us for the good news in our life for all that Christ has done for us. And with no more announcements, I would like to invite Liz to come up for our children's time. Hey friends, Pastor Liz here. 
Uh, one of my favorite things as a children's pastor is to, to stress the importance that children have in the life of the church. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Today in Pastor Rob's sermon, he's going to be reading from the passage that talks about the little mustard seed. And I feel like those two things go together because when you talk about the mustard seed and how it grows into this beautiful big tree, even though it's this itty bitty thing, I like to think of it the same way as the little children. You all might feel small sometimes. In stature, you are small, but little kids are like the little mustard seed. God has planted in you a faith that can grow so very big. So I just want to encourage you that even though sometimes you might feel like, oh, I'm a kid, what difference can I make? You can make a huge difference, a huge difference in this world, in the kingdom of God. That's what Pastor Rob's going to be talking about, the kingdom of God. You were planted as a seed in the kingdom of God to do great and amazing things. And it doesn't matter how small you are right now because you are growing and that is why it's so wonderful that we as a church, that parents invest their time and their resources and their hearts in your lives to help you to grow and to thrive and to do amazing things in this world and in the kingdom of God. So I want to just encourage you that you may be small now, but you are growing into these amazing human beings. You are amazing human beings, but you're going to grow um, and learn and um, with knowledge, and your heart's going to grow bigger for God, and that God is going to use you, and he is using you. It doesn't matter how small you are. God uses even the littlest, and so let's pray together. Dear God, thank you so much that you have entrusted us with faith and with hope and with love, and that as we grow, uh, even from being the littlest child to being uh, somewhat mature adults, that you have um, given us this kingdom that is yours, that we will help to flourish and to grow. And God, we pray that uh, every child knows that they can make a difference, that every child knows that you invite them to the table and that you love them and that you want them to do great things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. According to 1 John, it says that if we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, and we even make God out to be a liar. But if we confess our sins, if we admit our sins and come before the throne of God repenting them, our God shows himself not to be a God that is angry and wrathful, but a God of mercy and forgiveness. So come, let us confess our sins together, first in quiet meditation in our hearts and to God alone, and then together as it is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. And now together, God of healing, God of wholeness, we bring our brokenness, our sinfulness, our fears and despair, and lay them at your feet. God of healing, God of wholeness, we hold our hearts and hands, minds and souls to feel your touch and know the peace that only you can bring. God of healing, God of wholeness, in this moment, in your presence and power, grant us faith and confidence that here broken lives are made whole. In Christ Jesus we pray, amen. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, Christ prays for us. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. And now in gratitude for that forgiveness, let us stand and worship God singing together more love to thee, O Christ.
Please be seated. Our scripture passage today is from the good news according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. Now, before we read this, let us bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have delivered this word to us to give us instruction and guidance in this world. Lord, we know that we can understand none of these things you have revealed without your spirit to truly guide us. So, Father, I pray that you send your spirit now into our hearts and minds that we may hear, that we may read, and that we may understand. Lord, bless this holy reading of your holy word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. After we read the scripture passage, there will be a brief moment of quiet meditation. This is the gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, 26 to 34. Listen now to the word of the Lord. And Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the larger, comes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have any of you ever seen that movie, Good Will Hunting? You all remember that movie? It's a few years old by this point, but excellent movie. Excellent movie. If you don't know it, the premise is a janitor at a university is actually a math genius. Well, he's in fact a genius in many ways, but he's recognized as being an absolute genius in math. One of my favorite movies, a fascinating story. Um, other past week, I've actually came across a real-life Goodwill hunting story. Um, it takes place in China. This is a real story. This was a guy who was a delivery, uh, a delivery man in China. He only had like a high school, the equivalent of a high school education. But he was a math genius. In fact, he was so smart, he was able to develop the proof for these things called Carmichael numbers. Now, does anybody know what a Carmichael number is? I was going to be really impressed if you did. Because I didn't know what it was. And I even looked up what a Carmichael number was. And I had no idea still what a Carmichael number was. I mean, that's how like smart and mathy this stuff is. And it's so difficult that 20 years ago, a bunch of mathematicians, professionals, academics got together. And they were able to develop a proof for these Carmichael numbers. Well, this Chinese delivery man all by himself developed an independent proof of Carmichael numbers in his spare time just using a calculator and a fascination with numbers. And you hear something like that and you wonder how somebody could have slipped through the cracks like that. Somebody that was so smart that could do in his spare time what took a whole bunch of academics and mathematicians years to do together. And he goes unrecognized in this world in his genius. I saw a report put up by a, an Australian news channel of the many genius children that live in the slums of India. 
And Mensa, the high IQ society, has actually gone out and trying to identify some of these children uh, to give them the education that could really help them reach their potential. And some have estimated that there are over 5 million child geniuses, IQs of 130 or above, in the Indian slums alone. Not even counting the rest of India, just in the slums. 5 million children with IQs of 130 or above. And the tragedy is almost none of these children will ever be educated. Almost none of these children will ever receive any more than what we consider a primary school education. Most of these children will live in the slums the rest of their life, and their talent and their genius go undiscovered and unused in the world. It makes you think how many others are like that. It makes me kind of think, Who's the one that gets to decide who gets recognized for their talent and used for their talent and who gets forgotten? Who's the one that picks that? Who's the one that picks these songs are going to be the popular songs on the radio and these aren't? This singer is going to reach fame. This one's going to be an obscurity. This writer is going to have millions of fans. This writer is going to be unknown his whole life. Now, some of us might say, well, you know, it's merit. And we are taught to believe that. If you have talent and you put in hard work, then you will be rewarded and you will be recognized. That's what we believe, right? Talent will win out. Cream rises to the top. If you've got the ability, you put in the hard work, it will happen one day. You just got to keep at it. The older I get, the more I start to doubt that that's actually true. And hearing stories like the delivery man genius or all the child geniuses living in the slums of India makes me doubt it as well. And then my, my own experience even makes me doubt it more. I remember when I was a lot younger and I was going on the open mic circuit around Columbia, I was actually cursing the world with my poetry at the time. And I'd go to these open mic nights because like it says open mic, anybody can get up there. You don't have to actually be good to do it. But in those open mics, I saw so many good musicians perform. So many good musicians that were so talented, that had great voices. I met some excellent songwriters. And when I met him, I thought to myself, it is just a matter of time before this guy hits it big. I'm sad to say, none of those that I remember seeing in the open mic circuit have ever gotten their big record contract. None of them has hit, have hit it big despite their talent and despite their work. And I've been members of writer groups where I've met some very, very talented writers that have never been published. I've been uh, working with people writing screenplays and exchanging and helping screenplays. And, and they might not have been writing Citizen Kane, but I can guarantee you they're writing stuff that's a lot better than we're getting out of Hollywood today. Yet they have never once gotten their shot. And I think we've all experienced this in life at one time or another. We've all seen that, that person get a promotion in our job, and you know what's happened to you before? You're like, really? Really? That guy? They promoted him? The only thing he has going for him is he was buddies with the boss back in high school. That's his only merit. I actually think about the same thing every four years when we elect a president. I really do. I mean, all politics aside, I don't know what you think about the guys that were running this time around, but you've got to admit, come on, out of 350 million people in America, the most capable, the most talented, the most worthy people we had to run the United States, out of all of them, the two best we could produce were Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Come on. Seriously. That's the best that we could do. In Ecclesiastes 9.11, it says, The race is not to the swift nor battle to the strong, nor riches to the intelligent, but time and chance happen to them all. Or as my mom used to tell me, life isn't fair. There's some authority out there, some proverbial they, that gets to pick who is valuable in this country and who is not. Who is privileged and who isn't. Who is wealthy, who is poor, who is recognized. Who has a voice in our culture and who doesn't? Now, a lot of this sounds like bad news. And if it sounds like bad news to you, you're right. It is. It's bad news. And that the bad news is 
this is the world that we live in. Even United States, which is, is claims to have everything based on merit, everything is fair, which is, to me, the greatest nation on earth right now and probably the greatest nation ever to exist on planet earth so far. And we are so blessed to live in this nation. But it's still bad news for us. Even in America, even where we live today, work hard, hard work is not always rewarded. Even in America, talent is not always recognized. Even in America, sometimes the government does unjust things. In America, our leaders don't always look out for what's good for our people. Sometimes they look out what's good just for themselves. And even in America, our culture often teaches What's wrong is right, and what's right is wrong. And lately it seems like the whole thing has become topsy-turvy and turned completely upside down on top of its own head. It's kind of easy to despair at this point. It's kind of easy to despair when you hear that and you say, well, you know, what's the point of me putting all this effort into my life, into trying to bless other people with what I have? or trying to, to build up a life for myself, if, if it's not going to be recognized, if it's all luck, or it's all just up to those authority that they get to pick who's successful and who isn't. And the temptation is, you know what, I'm just going to build my own. The world can, you know, the world's just going to burn itself to pieces, let it do it. I'm just going to live my life and take care of my own. But there is good news here promise there is good news in all of this but we have to understand the bad news before we can really understand the good news the good news isn't near as good to us unless we understand how bad it actually is and how bad it actually can be and when we talk about good news what we've said is, is we're talking about the good news is how jesus changed life on earth that's what the good news is him announcing Life is about to change. The circumstances of our life are going to change in a fundamental way from the way it was. It is going to change and be something so much better now. That is the good news. And there's so much that's contained in the good news. And one of the most remarkable parts of the good news is the coming of the kingdom of God. And that was first and key in Jesus' ministry. You might remember back in chapter 1 when Jesus began his ministry, when he first started preaching, he said, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus was coming to this earth in his ministry to bring to us the kingdom of God. He brought his ministry to bring us under the kingdom of God. So we no longer live under the authority of the world. We live under the authority of Christ. This is what it says in Colossians 1.13. The Lord has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son. He's delivered us from darkness and transferred us now unto the power of His Son, which means today, now, now that Jesus has come and brought the good news, we live under the reign of Christ. We don't live under the reign of the world anymore. We don't live under the reign of the proverbial they, the powers of this world. Now our highest authority in life is Jesus Christ. And because Christ is our authority, because Christ is our king, he is the one that determines our value in life. He is the one that gives us meaning and purpose in life. He is the one that will tell you whether or not you have lived a successful life. And it doesn't matter to us anymore now how the world measures success. It doesn't matter now because we don't have to measure ourselves up anymore by the standard of this world around us. It doesn't matter if we're popular or not. It doesn't matter how strong we are or how influential we are or how many friends we have on Facebook or Instagram or how many people like our pictures. It doesn't matter anymore if you're wealthy or not or good looking or privileged or have an honored life. Because we don't have to live according to the standards of the world anymore. Today we live according to the standards of the kingdom of God. Whether or not we're honorable or righteous. Whether or not you live a merciful life, a holy life. Whether we are good in the eyes of God. Whether we live in a humble way. Charitable, forgiving one another. Loving one another as Christ 
has loved us. Jesus tells two parables today about the kingdom of God. And they both involve seeds. So the kingdom of God is like this seed that is planted. And the first one, he says, it's like a man would go out and scatter seed. And and it goes into the earth and nobody knows how it grows. If you've done a garden, you know that too. You just throw it in the earth and man, you don't know if it's going to grow or not or what's going to happen. You put the seed in the ground and no one knows. Only God sees it and God makes it grow And then you you go to sleep night and day and all of a sudden these little sprouts are coming up out of the earth. And the earth continues to make it grow. It becomes a shoot and it puts an ear of grain out. And then at the right time, someone comes and they harvest it and it's gathered into the house. He said the kingdom of God is also like a mustard seed, just a tiny little seed, the smallest one. You can barely see it if you hold it in your hand. And yet this little seed grows to be one of the biggest plants in the garden, and and birds can come and make nests in its shade. See, everything we see in this life, in this world, on this side of paradise, the kingdom of God is going to be that seed. That's all we are now. We We are just that seed planted by the word of God. This church, this church is the seed. The work we do in this church, that is the seed of God. You, me, all the believers as we live in this body, live in this world, we are seeds planted by God. Like the tiny little seed, we have a great destiny. Like that tiny little seed that's planted in the ground and you don't know what happens once it goes under the earth We have a great destiny that one day you, I, all of us are going to be the harvest of our God and we will be gathered by his arms and to his house. We might seem small now. We might even see insignificant or irrelevant by the way the world goes, by the powers that move the world. But one day, one day we will be the greatest kingdom in the world. In fact, one day we're going to be the only kingdom left standing. But today we're just the seed. Today we're just the seed that is planted by God, and today we are building the kingdom that will one day be the greatest in the universe. And all that we do in obedience and our, and our, and our piety and our devotion to God, all that is building His kingdom. You're building His kingdom today. Right now as we come to worship, we are building God's kingdom. Anytime you're obedient to the Lord, you're building His kingdom. All of your prayers, all of your devotions, all of your, all your Bible readings, all your Bible studies, that is building God's kingdom. All that we do outside these walls, our evangelism and our, and our missions, going to Costa Rica or the mission trip or the backpack program, that is building the kingdom of God. Your tithes and your offerings and the money and the time that you give is building the kingdom of God. When you stand up for what is right, when when you share your faith, when you declare the truth, you're building the kingdom of God. Right now we're just that seed, that seed still reaching out for its potential. The emerging kingdom of God that is at hand, but not quite yet. And this is the good news of the kingdom of God is is all your work and all your effort in the world isn't worthless, isn't pointless. No matter what the world says, no matter how they recognize it or not, what you do when you build the kingdom of God is you are building something for eternity. You're building a house that will stand for eternity. You're building a kingdom that never ends. All that you do here, all that you do in, in devotion to God is building a kingdom without end. That is good news. That is good news because our life really does matter. It matters tremendously. The good news doesn't end there either. It said a lot today about circumstances in life and how how your circumstances and what you're born into will, will affect your ultimate destiny in life. And there's some people born to good circumstances, some to bad. Some are born to rich parents, some to poor parents. Some are born to good families, some are born to awful families or live in no families at all. 
Some have good things happen to them in their life. Some are beset by tragedies. And, and we're just told over and over again that this is how unfair it is because it sets someone up for their whole life. And there's nothing we can do to change it. It will doom a person to poverty or it will bless a person with riches that they don't deserve. And you know what? It, it is unfair. It is unfair how, how some people are born under a brighter star than others. But because we are under the authority of the kingdom of God. Because we live under the authority of Christ, what that means is our circumstances don't determine our value. And your circumstances, whatever they are, do not dictate what kind of person you can be. And they do not control what kind of potential you can reach. You see, we don't belong to, Christ. We don't belong to the world. We belong to Christ, and Christ conquered the world. Christ conquered the world, so His Word stands above the Word of the world. His world Word is last over the Word of the world. And there is no circumstance in your life, there is nothing that you can experience that can prevent you from your work in the kingdom of God. There is nothing that you were born under, and there is nothing that you have to endure that can stop you from fulfilling your purpose in Christ. It doesn't really matter how bad it gets. Think of the worst possible thing that can happen to you. Still cannot stop you from fulfilling your purpose in Christ. You can get thrown in prison. You can get sold into slavery and have to live a life in change. You can lose all your property and lose all your rights. I mean, heaven forbid that would ever happen to any of you. But even if all that happened and worse, you'd still fulfill your work in the kingdom of God. I mean, the Apostle Paul did some of his best work in jail. The worse that happened to him, the greater things that he was doing for Jesus Christ. So this world cannot stop you from fulfilling your destiny in Jesus. Even if they cast you into a pit for 40 years to live by yourself, just tossing you down scraps to live on, you could still build the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is being built in you. And no power on earth has the final say on your value. No power on earth has the final say on how important you are. Your king is the one that gets to determine your value. Your king is the one that gets to say how important you are. And your king has already decided that you are valuable enough to die for. Your king has already decided it is so important that you are in his kingdom that he would lay his life down to make sure that you are with him there forever. This is the good news of the kingdom of God. We have an eternal kingdom. We have a great eternal work. and We have a king that has conquered the world and that king loves us and values us more than anyone else in creation. You know, I think of all those kids in the slum, all that genius that goes unrecognized, all that potential that goes unfulfilled, and you got to think, how much more? That's just in India. What about in the world? What about in our community? What about all the talent that goes unrecognized and wasted? You think about that, and it just, it just breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart, and I think, just what a tragedy. All that wasted potential in life. And when I think of something about that, it just makes me despair. And even in my heart, will wonder, you know, if that's the way the world treats us, then why bother trying? But then I remember the words of Jesus. He said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how, but when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And I remember that we are just that seed that is slumbering in the ground. And no one knows how it sprouts or when it sprouts. But we slumber dreaming of the greatness when we will one day join the harvest of God. I can't help but think to myself, how many, Lord, how many 
in this world? How many famous of our world, Lord, will be obscure in the kingdom of God? And how many among us that are obscure and unknown in this world will be the most famous in the kingdom of God? How many, I think, Lord, how many among us that are great and powerful will be lowly in the kingdom of our Father? And how many are among us that are lowly and forgotten will be great in the kingdom of God? How many, I ask, Lord, how many are favored and fortunate and blessed in this world that one day will have to hear from Jesus Christ face to face, I don't know you. And how many that we think are below us in favor, below us in fortune and below us in blessing that one day will be sitting right next to Jesus Christ at his table. Hear the good news of the kingdom of God. Today we are but the seeds of his kingdom. But tomorrow, tomorrow we will be his harvest. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me? Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. Father, we come to you today as your children to receive your blessing. We come to you today as the sheep of your fold, Lord, as sinners of your own redeeming. And Father, today we thank you that you have put us into a kingdom that has no end. Father, thank you for putting us in a kingdom where our work is eternal and lasting and where our value is not determined by the transitory and passing things of this world, Lord, but by determined by your love and your love alone. Lord, thank you for loving us so much that you brought us into your kingdom and called us your own. But Father, as we go forth from this place today, I pray that we would always keep that kingdom alive in our hearts and our souls and our minds. Father, that we always remember that we are your blessed people chosen by you and living in your kingdom. Father, I pray that we would not despair no matter what happens to us in this life, Lord. No matter how despairing it may seem in the world around us. But Father, that we may wait in hope and faith and anticipation, knowing that we are but that seed that slumbers in the ground, waiting for your glory to rise upon us. Father, I pray that we could take the good news of that kingdom everywhere we go. Lord, that we would first live it in our life, Father, from the time we rise up in our beds to the time we go to sleep at night, that we live in joyfulness and thankfulness and gratitude that we are a part of your kingdom. And in all we do, Lord, may we proclaim the goodness and the greatness of that kingdom, Father, until all are joined together in your kingdom as one. Father, help us to do that difficult work in the world of loving one another, of preaching the good news, of forgiving each other, Lord, and living as you would have us live, and Father, until that kingdom comes again. And Father, until that kingdom comes again, we ask for your blessing and your help in our life today. Father, we ask for those who are sick and grieving. Father, we ask for Steve and for Catherine. We ask for Carol and Bob and Bill and the Sawyer family that you would grant them healing and strength. And Father, we pray for all those that grieve the Robertsons and the Turners, for the Edwards and the Bradfords. and pray that you would comfort them, Lord, with your presence and peace. And Father, we remember all your great blessings, and especially, Father, the day, the blessing of Kristen and little Langston just born. And we thank you for what a wonderful blessing it is to have new life in this world and that you would strengthen and bless both mother and child. And Lord, I pray that you hear any unspoken prayers there in the hearts of the people gathered here today, that you would hear the cries of our hearts and attend to us with your spirit. And Lord, we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, any time we are obedient to God, we are in fact building His kingdom, a kingdom that will stand forever. And one of the ways we can be both obedient to God and build His kingdom is by our tithes and offerings. By giving to His church, we help build His kingdom here on this earth until God comes and establishes the eternal kingdom forever when He returns again. We thank you for any support that you give to Cherokee Presbyterian in that work. And if you would uh, like to continue to support us, there are many ways that you can. Uh, if you're here in person, we have offering plates on either side of the doors as you exit. But we can also uh, give through PayPal, through Venmo, through ACH Bank Draft, and through United States Postal Service. And we thank you for the support of this church as we try to do the work of the kingdom, transforming that small seed we are today to the mighty kingdom of our Lord. And now in response of thanksgiving for all that God has done for, done, done for us, let us stand and sing together the glory of Patria. Let us pray. Our gracious and merciful Father, we thank you for every gift that we have, you have given to us, Lord. And today we give back to you a small portion of the great abundance that you have blessed us with. We pray, Lord, that you would bless these gifts and may use, be used for the advancement and the furtherance of your kingdom on earth, Lord, until your kingdom in heaven is joined with that which is here in the world. Father, we pray you bless both the gift and the giver, and may it all be used for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue standing and say what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And you can find those words printed in your bulletin. Friends, what is it you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we'll join together and sing our closing hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Now, friends, go as God's holy ones, children.